welcome to episode 124 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk and today is the 9th of July. So welcome everybody. I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I have some knitting, some sewing, oh and some crochet to show you. I have a blast from the past which is sewing related. I have a gadget. I have some confessions <laughs> oh dear in fact I have more confessions but they haven't arrived yet some something rather large is coming next week I think well it's coming tomorrow I think so I shall show it you next week um, I have a review on my experience with net printer um, I have a question from the ask me anything thread and I have some information on my shop update which is every Friday at 7 p.m. GMT so you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic. You can also find me on my website, crafthousemagic.co.uk, uh, where I sell my hand-dyed yarn, project bags, higher higher knitting needles, stitch markers, fabrics, etc. I also post the show notes down in the down bar, but also on the website as well, if you find that easier to find. And I'm also starting from last week doing timestamps on the sections. So if you want to just watch the sewing or the knitting section, you can just click on the timestamp in the down bar and that'll take you straight to the bit you're interested in. So we have the summer sock along going on in the Ravelry group at the moment. Uh, so that goes right till the end of August. So you still have plenty of time to join in. I'm so behind on the Ravelry group at the moment. I haven't caught up with everyone's messages, but I'm hoping to catch up in the next couple of days. And then I will draw the prizes for the spring shawl along, which I haven't done yet. I'm so sorry. I must get that sorted in the next couple of days, but I will announce the winners on the next podcast. So make sure you watch that one. So let's get on with the knitting, shall we? So... The elephant in the room is my cardigan I am wearing. So this is my Guanwin cardigan. So it's made from a gorgeous pattern, um, but it's supposed to be a jumper. So this yoke is supposed to be all in sort of one round, um, but I decided to add six extra stitches in the center so that I could steek it. And on the last episode, I showed you um, how I steeked it. So I've turned the inside um, of the steek over and I've stitched a piece of gross grain ribbon on the inside just by hand stitching. And then I picked up stitches on the inside of the fold um, and then I've just done an eye cord edge just to finish it off because I thought that if I did a twisted rib like I did um, on the sleeve and on the bottom here it would break up this gorgeous pattern. Um, let me stand back so you can see it a little bit better. So this is my guan. It's come out quite long. Um, I actually was going to do it shorter but um, I thought it might actually be quite nice just to go over my bum a little bit. Um, I'm really happy with the length of the sleeves um, and it's it's all knitted in DK so it's quite thick. It's my merino and nylon DK weight yarn and this colourway is purple haze. Let me show you the yoke at the back. I'm really pleased with how that's come out. The only thing that I'm going to adjust, I think, slightly is that the neckband is an eye cord and I think it's still stretching out slightly, so it's sort of sagging a bit. Um, so the, well, the, basically the whole neckline, I think, is, is stretching slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some crochet stitches on the inside, I think, there to stabilise it a bit. Um, which I can actually, um, if I do it this weekend, I can just video a little bit of me doing it because quite often people ask me about um, how I would stabilise things with crochet stitches. So that might be useful to put in next week's episode. Um, the other thing that I've noticed that it is a little bit sort of baggy here. And I think that's partly because the neck is stretching out, but also because... Um, the size of arm that I needed to choose was about three sizes smaller than the size of the body that I was doing. So I picked the size for my upper bust measurement and knitted cables and the lace work. And then I actually um, increased to a bigger size for my bust area so that I didn't have too much fabric here. Um, but then from the size that I did for the sort of yoke bit to the sleeve, I actually did quite a lot of decreasing underneath here just before I sort of started the proper decreases down the sleeve. So I think that that's making it slightly baggy, but it might not notice it once I've stabilised the neckline um, with those crochet stitches. So there we go, we have a finished object. Ta-da! Poor 
little Barbara doesn't get to wear it this week. <laughs> just shuffling along with my chair. It just looks a bit odd. <laughs> I am actually going to take this off because it's rather warm. Well, it's not that warm in the house, but because it's quite a thick cardigan, it's a bit hot to be wearing that much cardigan in the house. So what I forgot to say was that the pattern, um, the Guanwin sweaters by Verena Cause, and I will put links to the pattern and the yarns in the down bar as well. So I have a second finished object. Can you believe it? <laughs> I finished my Hluenid shawl. Isn't that gorgeous? Actually, now I've blocked this, I've started to like it much better um, because it's just pulled out. Those cables were really dragging the shape in and it is slightly bigger than I thought it would be, actually. I really love um, these cables here. Absolutely gorgeous. So I think because it's sort of this sort of shape, what I'm going to do is wear it like so Ooh, my hair's getting in the way this is live action this is <laughs> things going wrong with putting shawls on there we go so I'm gonna wear it like this I think and I absolutely love this color absolutely gorgeous and actually when I've got it on like that it isn't as small as I thought it would be so because this is quite a toothy yarn I think that's gonna hold a bit better than I thought just tucked in um, to the pointy bit at the top of the shawl and if not I can just put um, a little shawl pin just there to keep it so that it doesn't come off um, and this is like my favorite color in the world teal <laughs> <laughs> absolutely gorgeous so this is the Huenid shawl and it's by Isolde Teague and I picked it up at the Edinburgh Yarn Festival last year and I did start it off quite soon but I'd made a mistake and then I just couldn't bring myself to rip it back so I left it in the cupboard with all my other whips <laughs> but then I've got it out and I've I've got it fixed and finished it so I'm really pleased about that so the yarn that I'm using is called Sol J Pencil Garn and it's the teal colourway now the yarn that the actual pattern calls for was a sport weight yarn and this I think is more like a four ply I'm not sure um, so it might have come out slightly bigger if I'd have actually done it in the yarn that it sort of called for but I'm really pleased with how this has come out and I do have um, a good nearly two whole skeins of yarn left over to make something else with so there we go I think I'll leave that on for a bit we can test whether it stays on so I've got two things off the needles that's brilliant so I think I've only got sort of two older whips that I haven't touched for ages so I want to pick those up again and finish them off but I could of course because I've got two things finished I could of course cast something new on couldn't I we shall see <laughs> so the thing that I've been working on this week apart from the two things I've finished is my transportation scarf now I don't normally show you this book every time but it is the Harry Potter Knitting Magic um, and it's by Tannis Gray I will leave a link to the book in the down bar and I started knitting this when we were doing the What a Lot of Potter Cal with Becky from the Back to Blighty podcast and I shamefully did not finish it. Oh dear. <laughs> so it basically consists of these three blocks. The, um, the night bus, some broomsticks, I reckon Nimbus 2001 <laughs> and the platform nine and three quarters symbol. Um, and that is supposed to be repeated four times with the addition of an extra bus um, thing. So I've done one, two, and I've almost done three now. <laughs> I'm so close. So I've got um, three more blocks complete and then the bus, so that's four plus this one. So say four and a half roughly. Um, but that, that took me, I think last week I'd knitted to about there. So I've only done that much since last week. But I then, but then again, I have finished off two other projects in the meantime. So I'm allowed. <laughs> so it's getting there slowly. Um, so it is a very long scarf. And I did say to Adam, would you like it a little bit shorter? He goes, no. <laughs> he wants it to be the cosiest thing possible. Um, I wouldn't say my tension is the best for colour work in this weight yarn. For some reason I find um, doing it in iron weight is harder to keep my tension. I think the yarn's thicker maybe, I don't know, for me it is anyway. Does anybody else have that? 
and I have been using my own hand dyed yarn in my merino um, Aran weight that I sell in my shop and I have the night buses in purple rain I have walking on sunshine for the brooms because the night is the blue f the, for the nine and three quarters symbol and then all in the background is ordinary world so right I've got to get this finished otherwise it's just going to be lingering on forever isn't it so that's the sort of knitting that I've been working on this week and I do have some crochet to show you I haven't done loads on this well it doesn't appear that I have because the rows are getting massively long so I've been working on my corner to corner crochet blanket and I'm going to attempt to get this in one shot I think I probably should start making it into a rectangle shape now so this is the start <laughs> this is how long the row is this is how long I have to crochet for to get one row in I think I've done possibly four rows since the last time I showed it and if I show it you from this straight edge from corner to the one pointy end it's it's a good hand span it's difficult to get it all in shot but I so I think that this sort of length on this side is as big as I want the shortest length to be if that makes sense and then I can start doing a rectangle and keep making it until I decide yes that's long enough to be like a, a blanket to go on the sofa for me and Adam to sit under in the winter months <laughs> so the pattern is called the corner to corner crochet blanket and it's the one the tutorial I'm following is the Bella Coco tutorial and she does such a fantastic tutorial if you are a beginner crocheter I would recommend it because you can see what she's doing you haven't got to read patterns which I think is absolutely brilliant and also it gives the most adorable texture see if I can get in close there I just love this texture that it's forming I don't think the camera's really doing it justice really um, there we go So you can see that I'm basically using all my little scraps up and I'm holding two four ply yarns double. I'm using an undyed um, skein and then whatever scraps I've got left over. So it's a great way to use up bits and bobs. So that's my crochet um, and I do have some sewing. So Barbara, would you like to come over? Thank you, Barbara. So Barbara is wearing yet another Eve dress. So I made like a turquoisey blue with lots of floral, um, lots of flowers all over it a couple of weeks ago. And I decided I needed another one. So I thought I'd go with a black background this time because I feel that black always makes me feel slimmer anyway. Um, but I do love this pattern because it is a wraparound dress. Um, it, cut, it just goes underneath the bust and I think it accentuates the bust area rather than the bits I don't want to accentuate. <laughs> so the Sew Over It Eve dress is a pattern that you can purchase either as a PDF file like I did or you can get a paper copy as well from Sew Over It and I'll leave a link to the um, the website in the down bar. Um, the previous one I made in a viscose crepe and this is also a viscose crepe but it's it's a little bit weird um, so when I actually purchased it it was a very flat um, fabric and then I washed it and it went really wrinkly now I bought this other fabric with it and it kept they both washed and they came out really wrinkly like this which I think looks really nice on this fabric um, but for this one that's got flowers on I thought it just spoiled the look of the flowers so I ended up pressing it out before I made this garment so these two fabrics are from fabric land and I do feel that it's fabric land isn't always the 100% best quality but you do get bargains sometimes so it's sometimes worth the risk I think um, I ordered four meters of each of these two fabrics um, and they came to 20 pounds uh, each so that really isn't bad for four meters so I thought I did love it anyway I thought well, I'm just gonna risk it and see how it comes out I would ordinarily just use um, the fabrics that are less expensive on my sort of first wearable twirl of a garment but I just I love this fabric so much I thought I need it <laughs> and it's a bargain so it was weird that it was very crinkly but I've managed to press most of it out and you can see the flowers a lot better although there is a little bit of a wrinkle in the fabric which is quite a nice texture really it's not nowhere near as much as this though um, you can see that close up 
you see that's really quite wrinkled I'll show the dress up close up in the minute so it is a wrap dress I don't think I showed you this properly on the last one I made so it opens right up sorry Barbara you're exposing your bra um, so there's ties on both the sides here and they're absolutely massive ties which I love it just looks quite flamboyant when you've got them tied up at the front um, and there's a hole in the side of the seam which is this side so you leave a gap so that you can pass through um, the opposite cord through there so you can put that round and then you can pass them both behind your back oh Barbara she's been a bit naughty isn't she <laughs> oh dear and then we can just tie it I like I think I like to tie it at the front at the moment it is easier if you're actually tying it on yourself for some reason but you get the idea um, but I think that this neckline is really nice and flattering and I just think that especially if you're a busty person it just it's so nice to have something that doesn't show your belly too much um, so I'm in love with it so this is my second version I'm sure there's going to be many more and it's probably going to be a bit like my Frankie t-shirt where I've got about 15 <laughs> But obviously I need more places to go if I'm going to be making dresses. Um, I'll have to have a word with Adam about taking me out to dinner. Um, so the Eve dress, actually, the, the bodice at the back is made up of two panels, but I didn't bother pattern matching, which I probably should have done, really. Um, and I, it was, wasn't like I was short on fabric either, so I could well have made it so this matched up, so, but I don't think it looks too bad. So there's two options on the Eve dress. You could have one where the back is longer than the front or one that's very even. I chose the one to have it longer at the back because I think it's quite flattering. It covers um, the legs a bit. <laughs> it's always good. And also there's two options on the sleeves. I like the floaty sleeves. I just love these. They just cover your arms enough to um, make it look quite flattering really. And also it's quite whimsical. It's lovely. And there is an option to have a straight sleeve. But I've heard heard quite a lot about so over its sleeves being quite tight so I've never actually tried them myself so I'd have to um, try the other version out to see if it does fit or not so um, on the first version I made which I made a couple of weeks ago I did modify the sizes when I was cutting them out I, I've got a bodice block that I drafted myself and I just placed it over the pattern pieces just to make sure that it was going to fit me and I ended up actually cutting the size 12 at the very top of the shoulders because I am quite um, sort of short and narrow at the top here and then I graded out and ended up to be a size um, 20 I think on the hips could have been a 22 for so over it actually I'm getting confused with the cashmere sizes I think it was a 22 for the sew over it but um, I found that I was able to get the pieces to fit so I think I had the size 12 at the top of this piece as well um, and that graded right out under the arms to a uh, an 18 and then down to a 22 I think there's a little piece of fabric at the top here which allows some gathers at the top of the bust here so that you've got extra fabric to go over the boobs so I just thought I'd show you the insides so there is a piece at the top of the shoulder here which is easy to see from the inside which I used the burrito method Method, um, and actually cut out four of these pieces rather than the two that it said on the pattern and I have got really nice neat seams there. Sean from Kittish Behaviour has got a really good tutorial on the burrito method and actually about halfway through the video because she shows a sort of a yoke on the back of a shirt um, in the first part but then she does show you exactly how she does the Eve dress um, burrito yokes here so I will leave a link to that tutorial in the down bar so I basically just did overlocked seams for the rest of it I know that Sean from Kittenish Behaviour she tends to do them all French seams but I'm quite happy with them being overlocked and pressed open I think that looks neat enough around the neck it calls for some twill tape to stabilize the neckline so it doesn't stretch out that's what I've done and then I've just turned it over well I've overlocked it then turned it over then just stitched it down and the same with the seam allowance at the bottom actually I've just overlocked 
blocked it and stitched it down. One, because I didn't want to use satin bias tape in case this is going to be a bit of a pain to press out if it's going to wrinkle up every time I wash it to the extent that it looks like this. <laughs> So I have to just be aware that I can't take it somewhere where I won't have an iron available. But I'm really pleased with this. It's a nice fabric and I thought I'd just show you the fabric close up. So it's a nice sort of corally floral with a teal leaves which I think is just sort of an evening sort of print really i'm just i want to really have a few pieces that i've got um to grab if i want to go out in the evening because whenever we sort of decide to go out for a meal which to be honest because of lockdown we haven't been out for ages but i haven't ever got anything nice to wear to go out in the evening so now that i'm making these eve dresses i've got a couple of things to grab because there isn't any proper zipped closures or anything, it actually isn't too bad a pattern for somebody who isn't who hasn't got a lot of sewing experience. If you did it in like a cotton um, poplin or something like that that's easier to sew with, um, this might be an ideal thing to start really because actually the sleeves, you don't need to gather stitch them in. It just sort of eases into place, which I think is easier than doing the gathers for the sleeve. And although there is gathers at the front here, I think that gathering on a sort of straight line is easier than gathering for a shoulder seam. So it um, might be something to sort of, not perhaps the first thing that you sew, but something to increase increase your skills without having to sort of do zips and things like that. Poor Barbara has been abandoned in the corner with no top on. <laughs> What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop some footage of me maybe in the garden twirling in that dress but it might also be in my lounge because it is raining I think so we'll see. <laughs> So I have also cut out the Upton dress by Cashmerette and I cut it out in a black satin but I didn't get it finished over the weekend because the lining hadn't arrived which it has now so I can show you that in my confessions section but I hopefully get that done this weekend but it's going to be a fancy dress. Um, that sounds a bit weird, not like Halloween fancy dress, <laughs> a dress that looks fancy and you can go out to dinner with and look really fancy. <laughs> Anyway, um, I also watched the Best Day Ever podcast um, and I saw that lovely Arthella had these gorgeous pattern weights that she'd made from little squares of her sort of favourite fabrics and I thought that was a fantastic idea. Um, I'll leave a link to that podcast if you want to um, hear Arthella talk about them a bit more but I want to try and make some time to make some of those at the weekend as well. I do tend to use the washers but the little, little pillows look really cute so I might have a go at those. I have a blast from the past to show you now. So this is an, another dressmaking thing. So this is the Miette skirt by Tilly and the Buttons and it's a wrap skirt with massive pockets. Um, and this is something that I made a couple of years ago but I've probably not used the best fabric because the pockets have sort of sagged a little bit because of the thinner chambray I've used it'd be better in a, a sort of more substantial fabric but it is still quite a nice skirt and the massive pockets oh you can't beat those can you <laughs> So it is a wrap skirt and it has actually got a similar thing to the Eve dress in that there's a there's a buttonhole there where you can sort of wrap the skirt round and put your cord through the one side and then it sort of wraps round. Let's see if I can do this on camera. <laughs> Not sure that is a good idea really but never mind. So that pulls round there. 
and then you can sort of tie it wherever you like um, so it's a nice comfy wrap skirt and then you don't have to worry about it being too tight really it folds over at the back it overlaps quite a lot so which which is really good um, it just goes past my knee and I'll, what I'll try and do is when I've recorded the podcast I'll um, try and take some footage so you can actually see it properly without me having to stand on the table <laughs> So this, the Miette pattern's by Tilly and the Buttons, and I'm tempted to make another one, but in a stiffer fabric so that the po pockets don't gape. I was just trying to make a more summery skirt, really. But also, you could wear leggings underneath it, which I think is a, a good idea. So that's my blast from the past. On my gadget section, it's not quite a particular gadget, it's sort of a group of gadgets that I use um, for putting together PDF patterns. Now, a few people have asked me to do a little tutorial, so I'm going to try and get a tutorial recorded over the weekend of me sellotaping the pieces together so you know exactly how I go through the process of, of putting the PDF pieces together. So what I tend to use a lot is a rotary cutter and a ruler so that I can put the transparent ruler over the line I need to cut along and be as accurate as possible because actually putting the PDF pieces together you need to be more accurate than you think if you haven't done it before and I also tend to use this magic tape scotch tape which is a tape that can be reapplied it it's, isn't sort of stuck there forever so you can move it if you put it in the wrong place so I find that tape is really useful and I like to have it in a dispenser so that it's easier to use so those three things have my sort of essential kit that I use for putting PDF patterns together but do watch out because I do want to do a little mini tutorial on assembling PDF patterns because it can be a little bit daunting sometimes so my next section is confession a bit naughty so i have showed you some of this before so like i said fabric land purchase was this viscose along with the one i've made my eve dress with and it's gone a very crinkly texture but actually i don't think i'm going to iron this before i cut it out because i want it to sort of have that effect when i've finished it and if i did sort of press it out and then cut the pieces out it sort of gather the fabric in once I'd cut the pieces out if that makes sense once they've been washed and if I have it like this then it, it becomes an item that doesn't need ironing which is always good <laughs> this is my theory anyway but we shall see whether it actually works out if you've got any advice on and don't think that that's a good idea please let me know so I've bought those two and I do have a bit left of the black fabric with the flowers on as well so I might be able to get like a little top out of it or something we shall see so this is the fabric I bought for my lining to go with my black satin dress so I picked up the black satin must be at least a year ago in the idea that I was going to make the upturn dress and I thought well I've got to do it I'm going to do it <laughs> So I cut all the pieces out and then realised I hadn't got any lining and I didn't want to just sort of throw it together with any old line and I wanted it to actually have something that was reasonably nice even though it's sort of a wearable twirl. I'm pretty sure I've got the sizes right because I've made quite a few cashmere patterns and I know the modifications I need to make to the pattern to make it fit. So it is a viscose acetate which I think will be better for sort of breathability compared to a normal lining but it is a very drapey smooth fabric but I just thought that this sort of burgundy colour would look nice with the black because I don't think you can really match black very well sometimes blacks can be darker or sort of more grey and then if I bought a black lining fabric and it wasn't the same black it would look funny so I thought this would be quite nice hopefully I can sew it so the lining fabric doesn't show to the front <laughs> we can hope also so that was from Minerva Crafts and I will leave a link to these things in the down bar as well I also picked up a zip from there an invisible zip but you've seen those before so you don't need to see that and then I thought because you had to spend a certain amount to get free postage <laughs> I decided that you can't go wrong with a bit of plain black viscose can you you need like these staple items in your wardrobe so I picked up four meters <laughs> but actually this viscose seems ever so nice 
it is it was 10.99 a meter this one so it wasn't the cheapest but it's just got a nice it's slightly weightier than some of the viscose as i've used before so i will leave a link in the down bar to that as well so there should be some because i literally um, bought it last week so i've got four meters of that i'm thinking alba skirt by so over it from the new capsule wardrobe summer edition but i also fancy another black eve dress so I should make different patterns, Ellie. Make different patterns. Oh, I forgot to say, this is going to sound really random now. This was actually from Fabricland and it is some faux suede. Now, I bought this because Adam wants to make a Star Trek uniform, which is reminiscent of the new, the reboot of the sort of star trek movies and there is some yellow on there and he's been looking some faux yellow suede for absolutely ages so i managed to get some and it was 2.99 from fabric land so not the best sort of quality but if it's a, a dress up outfit goodness knows where he's going to wear this from and he says that i he doesn't need me to help him he's going to do it himself he says he's done no dressmaking ever <laughs> bless him I actually wanted to mention these two fabrics that I showed you last week because I forgot to actually say where they were from which is really silly and I wanted to reiterate where they were from because they were from a small company and I always like to try and support some small companies as well they're from a company called Fabric Bee and they were shipped so so quickly I think they were shipped the next day and obviously because the Royal Mail's taken a little bit longer by in another couple of days it had already arrived but with the fabric land that took at least a week and a half to be dispatched and the Minerva crafts as well normally they're quite quick at dispatching it took them a couple of days hence the fact it didn't get to me before the weekend so the fabric bee I definitely recommend and it was really packaged lovely so one to look out for there as well which I haven't used before but I'm really impressed with them oh i've got more stuff that i've bought i forgot about this <laughs> this is so naughty so i thought because i needed another <laughs> a pin wrist holder thingy so i got two magnetic ones i thought i'd try one of these ones with an actual pin cushion so i've seen a few dressmakers use these so the company that make it are Bohin France and it's a big cushion that sort of clips on your wrist um, and then you can put your pins in like that rather than using a magnetic pad like I normally use. I thought I'd try this one to see how it goes. Plus I find that I use, I'll just grab them here. I've got a Coco Knits one which I tend to use uh, for pins that I use for sort of bag making and finer fabrics. And then I've got a separate one which is a um, prim one which I tend to use for jersey fabric. So these pins are special jersey pins so that they're blunt ended, not sharp. Um, so I thought I'd have a third one. <laughs> Because what I do with um, dressmaking is when I'm actually cutting out a big pattern, I tend to do it on the living room floor and I pin the pattern pieces to it um, and I'm finding it a bit of a struggle just grabbing the pins out of the pin box so i thought if i get one of these i can try it out and sort of do a review and tell you which one of these three i think are best <laughs> i did actually pick this off amazon and i think i picked this one off amazon as well but i got this from the loveliest yarn co so i'm try to pick things up from smaller businesses rather than getting things from amazon if i can i haven't really used this a lot yet but i will let you know how i get on with it later so so far it seems like it stays stiff on the top of the the wrist which is handy i'm not quite sure whether it'll be as comfortable as these sort of rubber coated straps but we'll just have to see i normally wear them for sort of at least an hour or so so that will be a good test when i'm pinning out some fabrics maybe this weekend we shall see <laughs> i shall show you it a bit closer up so that's a uh, bohin france and it's got sort of a brushed metal look to it. it looks quite fancy and this is packed in quite stiffly with some sort of um filling maybe i don't know what it's made of the pins it takes a little bit of a push to put it through but i think that sometimes is quite good because you know that it's holding your pins in there nice and stiff so there we go that's a naughty purchase which i don't really need to buy but hey ho <laughs> and that is all of my purchases i am starting to buy way too much stuff i think i haven't bought any yarn for ages though so maybe i should
<laughs> oh dear. So, I've got a little bit of a mini review of the experience I had with Netprinter. So Netprinter are a company that print out sewing patterns as well as other things as well they, they're a printing company but you can ask them to print out sewing patterns so that they're on an a0 sheet so it's an absolutely massive sheet of paper to save you having to stick all the pieces of paper in them pdf files that for a print at home so normally when you purchase a pdf pattern you get the print at home version which can be printed on a4 sheets of paper and then you get this massive copy shop a0 version so they then print it on these massive pieces of paper and you don't have to stick pieces of paper together which is brilliant and it's also quite a nice quality paper as well so i'll grab one of the pieces i submitted the order on one day and it literally arrived the day after i think it was crazy quick it's got good quality printing on it so which i don't know oh this is one of the cashierette patterns so so you get this massive printout and it just means one you don't have to stick things together you don't have to worry about things being at the right scale because i've just checked and they're all at the right scale it is more expensive than sticking your pieces of paper together obviously but i think in some ways it's worth it because it's a time saver but i did notice that when i ordered mine there was a couple of sheets missing so i just emailed them and actually they sent them the, that that very day so they arrived the next day so there was no problem there but it was probably because i ordered eight different patterns with sort of four or five sheets each so i ordered absolutely tons so the customer service was brilliant and i think sometimes everyone's bound to make a mistake once in a while and the fact that they corrected it so quickly, I think it's absolutely brilliant. So the price point, I think it's 150 per sheet, but then you also have to pay postage and also a folding fee as well. I folded this wrong, I'm just going to put it down. <laughs> so you also have to pay a folding fee, um, which makes it a little bit more expensive. But I think for the eight patterns that I got printed, it was £2.80 folding fee, so I don't think that was very much. And I think the postage was something like £8.50. I think if you do a big bulk order like that, it just doesn't seem so bad. And um, I was very surprised how quickly it was, so well worth a go. I think that the fold line also do a service where they print out patterns as well but I'm not quite sure uh, about the costs and everything but I've heard that they've, they give good customer service as well so that's that's one to think about so I will link the net printer link in the down bar as well as the fold line version as well so you can have a look for yourself so that's my little, sort of little mini review so I'm really pleased with that and I think that over the weekend I was able to sort of cut out and find the sizes that I needed on the Upton dress in a lot less time to be honest so I'm really pleased I did that because if there's a lot of things you want to do and then you're spending a lot of time sticking pieces of paper together it can seem like you're not getting a lot done if that makes sense so i'm going on to the ask me anything section next so i have one question from hayley she was explaining that she was making christmas gifts already and she wondered where i store my christmas gifts if i do handmade things so whether this will be any help to you hayley but i tend to put it in this box here but i'm not going to get it out because there's secret things in there <laughs> To be honest though, I would suggest actually that if you do store any sort of yarn, you're probably better off sealing things in a sealed container so that you don't have any risk of moths getting at it, to be honest. Even though I've got these out here, which is a bit naughty, I would suggest that you did sort of seal it up really. But because I don't have any children, nobody is likely to go in that box. And Adam doesn't even know that I keep my Christmas gifts in that box. So hopefully he doesn't watch this video and he might go rummaging. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so there we go so last of all i have the shop update section um and this shop update will go live tomorrow at 7 p.m gmt and it's the 10th of july tomorrow i have got in a very summery mood so i decided i'd design a new bag that is sort of free motion and applique and it is my swallow design Let's see if I can get this closer. So they are appliqued swallows um, onto the background fabric. And then I've free motion stitched some clouds in there because I thought that was really nice and bright um, and very summery. So this is the drawstring version. And I have my free motion stitched crafthousemagic.co.uk and a little cloud on the back as well. 
and then on the inside I've got this gorgeous sort of minty green fabric and you can just see there that I've got a couple of nice big pockets and I've just put some yarn in there so you can see what it looks like there's 400 grams in there and this is the medium size bag I only offer the sort of applique and free motion stitch bag in the medium size because the ratio is wrong if it's in a different scale so that scooches in nicely like that um, and you can still see the gorgeous little swallows so you can also have the zipped version which i have here which was, hasn't got yarn in but you can still see that it's got the box bottom as well as this one so they're both box bottoms but i just wanted to give you the option of having the zipped version as well same little signature craft ice magic on the back with the little cloud and then of course because i like to have things all to match i've done a little set um all the other little bits and bobs that i tend to make with my sets so i have a little notions pouch with a swallow on the side with the same fabric same lining fabric i have a scissor case with the swallows on the back i have the circular needle case with a little swallow on here I'll pop a link to the video just up here where you can see how to use these circular needle cases and I also have a DPN as well so I like to always do the sort of four things to match the bag if you want to buy them so you'll be able to purchase them as a set or individually and, and there'll be a section on my website where the swallow collection will be together. And of course, if you purchase one of the bags, you'll get um, one of the little lavender sachets to go with it as well. Really excited to show you those because I think they're really nice and bright and summery and getting us in the mood for a sort of summer holidays in the back garden and doing our knitting. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I shall see you next week. Bye.